By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match between Ron and Nick. And this is a special match because both of these players are taking part in the Reborn League. And this is an event where players open sealed products and use that to make a deck. In this case, we have all opened a starter deck of 4th edition, two booster packs of Fallen Empire, and two booster packs of Chronicles. Now, if you'd like to know some more about this event, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now, and you can actually see my opening. For now, we have uh, Ron sitting on the left, and he's playing with blue, white, and green, and we have Nick sitting on the right, and he's playing with black, red, and green. So let's quickly go to the game and see what's gonna happen. Game number one, and we can see that Ron on the left has played a basic island, and Nick has played a basic mountain. And there goes the pool, and this is going to be very interesting because we are going to see cards uh, from 4th edition from... Here's the Iron Claw Orc, it's a 2-2 creature, it's from the 4th edition starter deck, originally Alpha, and it's a 2-2 Orc. And it cannot be assigned to block any creatures with power greater than one, I believe. There's a forest by Ron, and what I wanted to say is we are going to see cards from a lot of different sets. Like this is Wall of Heat, for instance, and it's from Chronicles, and it's a 2-6 wall. And we're also going to see cards from the Fallen Empires. And there's a Yoshian Soldier, the 1443, I believe, and it has vigilance. So will Ron block here or is Nick planning a combat trick, and he is, there's the Giant Grove, killing the Ocean Soldier, followed up by an Urk Raiders, the 2-3 creature for 2 mana, pretty good card. Tapping 4 here, and there's his Crypt Sprites and the Archer from Legends, and you can tap the Archer, and as you can see it was on the screen, and it can deal 1 damage to an attacking creature. So he can do some combat tricks now, especially since you can now block and deal damage. But the archer still has summoning sickness and Ron here is taking the damage, going to 14 life. And there is a fear. And a fear is an enchant creature. He plays it on the Urk Raiders and it means that it can only be blocked by black creatures or artifact creatures. So Ron is a little bit in trouble here, attacking with the script sprites. And ooh, this is good playing a prodigal sorcerer, the Timmy. And with that archer, that means that he can deal 2 damage to attacking creatures. So, that is interesting. And um, of course, the Timmy still has summoning sickness, so Nick can still attack with the Iron Claw Orc. And look at that, Ron is already on 10 life, so his life is half. And of course, that Wolf Heat is offering some great defense for Nick. And there is what's coming for 3 blue. I have no idea. <laughs> there is a Puppet Master, a card from Chronicles, originally from Legends. And here you can see the card in your screen. It's pretty complicated, but what actually happens is when a creature dies, uh, the creature that has Puppet Master on it will then return to Ron's hands. And at that moment, Ron can also pay three blue and have Puppet Master come back to his hand. So in a way, it's a really bad uh, regeneration. And he's playing it on his Timmy. And I guess they're discussing the card now. And this is one of those cards where the wording is very unclear. So when you actually look it up online, it'll show you the errata text. And then the rules are very clear. So what it states is when the creature dies, the creature goes back to your hand. And Ron can pay three blue to have Puppet Master return to his hand as well. But of course, you have to have three blue open. <laughs> But at least his uh, Protocol Sorcerer is protected. And this is the Goblin War Drums, my favorite art here from Richard Kane Ferguson. And that basically says that each attacking creature by Nick has to be blocked by two creatures now. And this is a problem, again attacking with that Urk Raiders that is unblockable because of the fear. Ron is on eight life. So this is a problem, Ron has to do something now. Tapping for four here and playing a Control Magic. Wow, so I guess he just pulled a Control Magic out of his starter deck. And that is a great pull. And that's pretty fantastic. And that's great timing by Ron because that Urk Raiders was really killing him. And he's already on 8. And is he going to attack with the script sprites as well? He is. And that means that Nick goes to 17. Passing turn now. And I haven't seen a single uncommon or rare coming on the table from Nick's side. 
course the control magic isn't uncommon but we haven't seen a single rare in this game and there's an attack and look at that and now it's going really fast and i believe these are cat warriors warriors it's a 2-2 a with forced walk and that's uh, from arabian knights that's a card that ron's playing and nick is playing a mountain yeti a 3-3 with mountain walk and protection from red don't think that's really gonna help Nick at this time. I mean, a 3 3 is big, but he has that Force Walker, he has the Urk Raiders now, and he has the Script Sprites. So Nick is on 7, and he needs to find answers soon. And look at that, a Dragon Engine. That's a 1 3 card. And the interesting thing about Dragon Engine is that it was a common in the Antiquities, but a rare in Revised. Ooh, there's a lot of glare on that card. I actually cannot make out what card that is. So that is a little unfor unfortunate. Um, I do see here that Nick is going to six. And let's see, and there's an attack. And I believe it's over now. Yes, it is. And that means the end of game one. So that's a victory by Ron. And uh, I think that control magic is really uh, what got him the game. And uh, congratulations on your first victory so let's quickly go to game number two and let's see who's actually gonna win this matchup game number two here and the first victory for ron winning the first game so if he wins his second one he wins the first match because it is a best of three and i believe nick has taken a double mulligan and we're playing according to the london mulligan rule so that means he needs to put two cards on the bottom of his library so things are not looking great for nick also being on the play and look at that, playing a Mountain, having a 1-drop, that's pretty good, playing a Mons Goblin Raider, so maybe some early damage here, but we see a Lanor Elf from Ron, and that's obviously the better card here, playing a Swamp, and I wonder if Nick has any Goblin uh, Balloon, or any, sorry, any uh, um, Goblin Grenades in his deck, that's what I'm trying to say here, and look at that 3-drop by Ron here, there's the Cat, a 2-2 Forest Walker from the Arabian Nights, so well, in this case, the Chronicle Edition, and Nick is playing the 2 1 Pump Knight from the Fallen Empires. Oh, a unstable mutation. That means that's a 5 5 powerhouse here. And Nick has taken the full 5 damage, and Ron is following it up with a Murfolk of the Pearl Trident. So that's a lot of pressure here by Ron. I wonder if I would have chump blocked here, to be honest, with the Mons Goblin Raider. Of course, it depends as well if Nick plays with the Goblin Grenade, because then you want to keep your goblins. And he's jump blocking now, that means he's taking two more damage, going to 13, and Ron is on 16 at the moment. Let's see what else Nick can do here. I do believe I see an Abomination. Yes, that's an Abomination in Nick's hand, so let's hope that he can play that out this game. Because that's an awesome card. And he's gonna attack here, dealing three damage with the Palm Knight. So he's still actually playing pretty aggressive. And that means that the road is now open for Ron to attack. And that means Nick is going to eight. And uh, what's interesting here is, or what we shouldn't forget here, is that the unstable mutation puts a minus one, minus one counter on the cat. And it looked like Ron wanted to play out a card there, but changed his mind. And the cat warrior is now back to its original two, two. Power and toughness. Attacking with his entire army and look at Nick giving it first strike blocking here the cat warrior And killing it and that means he takes two more damage going on six But it looks like he's kind of stabilized and Ron is playing a super good blocker here with the uh, wall of brambles a 2-3 wall with regeneration So basically just it can basically block everything on the ground here And I see a goblin war drums here in the hand of Nick don't think it's really gonna help him but he is playing it out nonetheless. And of course we saw this Goblin War Drums in game number one as well. And let's see what Ron's gonna do. He's playing a Yoshin Soldier and that could be kind of tricky here because a Yoshin Soldier is a 1-4. So it's really hard to kill with the Palm Knight. And this is pretty cool, the Abomination, a 2-6 Uncommon from 4th edition. And it says at the end of combat destroy all green and white creatures blocking or blocked by Abomination. And destroy is not buried, so that does mean that Ron can actually block it with the Wall of Brambles, I believe, and then regenerate it at the end of the turn when it's destroyed by the Abomination. And Ron is now passing turn, so look at this. So 
The Abomination is protecting. Oh, and this is cool. Shimmy and Night Stalker. I've actually never seen this card in, in a game. It's a 4-4 creature. And it has an ability, Swamp and Tap, redirect to the Night Stalker. All damage dealt to you by any attacking creature. So that means that even if Ron can find a flyer and deal some damage through the air, uh, Nick can actually save himself using the ability of the Night Stalker. And I think Nick, you know, I just want to say that how cool is your board state? You've got the Night Stalker and the Abomination together. I mean, that's great. And that card that has a lot, a lot of glare on it is actually the uh, Order of the Ebon Hand. So it's a 2-1 Punk Knight. And I believe I see a tapping card here in his hand. Is he going to play it out? He's playing it out. So that means he wants to go and attack a word of binding and it says tap X creatures. It's He's tapping the Wall of Brambles and he's tapping the Yoshin Soldier. Does that mean that he's going to attack? He is actually. And the Goblin War Drums means that Ron has to double block if he wants to block a creature. And is he going to double block? It looks like he's double blocking the Pum Knight. So he's willing to trade two creatures for one here. And it also means he takes two less damage. So it's, it's an understandable trade here. Look at this. Ooh, this could be a game changer. A circle of Protection Black. Ooh, my, 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 Nick. And of course, playing now, it looks like he's now just playing with red and with black. That means that he cannot get rid of the Circle of Protection that easy. I just don't think he can, actually. So that means he'll have to find other sources than black sources to kind of kill Ron here. This could be quite problematic, actually. And now he's playing an armor throw, and you cannot see it because of the glare. But I checked it out in the slow motion. It's an armor throw, and that's a 1-2 creature, and you can sacrifice it to put a plus 1, plus 2 a counter on a creature he controls. So he's actually sacking it now and putting it on his Night Stalker. So his Night Stalker is now a 5-6. And that's actually a nice combo... Look at this! This is pretty cool! Wow! Play an Earthquake! You lucky man! That means he drew an Earthquake um, with the uh, in the 4th uh, edition starter. But the script sprites is not going to die exactly around this going to stay because it flies. And Earthquake deals X damage to each creature on the ground. And of course Nick has two creatures with a very big toughness there. That ab Abomination having 6 toughness and the Night Stalker now having 6 toughness as well because of the Armor Thrall counter. And he's redirecting the damage from the Script Sprites to his Night Stalker and that's actually what's keeping him alive now. And look at this, a Fireball! Ho ho ho! Really? I mean, this is pretty cool. Nick, you've actually, you've actually won this second game and I didn't see it coming. I mean, Ron started off well, you only had 5 cards. Congratulations, and um, really impressive here by um, by those two black creatures you played, the Simeon Night Stalker and the Abomination. Um, very well done, well played here. So it's 1-1, so that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, and it's 1-1. Yes, I was hoping for it to, get, to, to go to 1-1. I actually was thinking when that second game started that um, Nick was toast. And look at that, a City of Brass. So I guess he pulled it out of one of his boosters here as a rare. That's really nice. So back, fresh, mint, Chronicle City of Brass. Attacking with the Scavenger Folk. And of course, uh, Nick is willing to trade here. Playing Amulet of Krug. Two mana tap, prevent one damage to any creature or player. It's not great synergy with the City of Brass at the moment. Because he needs to tap it. Look at that, two black. Playing a Bok Imp. That's, I believe it's a 1-1 flyer. Attacking it with the Bok Imp, and he's not going to trade. Interesting. Deeming the flyer too valuable, but look at that. There's the Archer, and the Archer can be tapped by Ron to deal 1 damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Of course, it now has Summoning Sickness still, so that means that Nick can at least swing in for 1 more damage. Having an Amulet of Krug and enough mana now to activate it, he can... Uh, 
protect himself a little bit, preventing some damage here. And there we see an attack, preventing the damage with the amulet. And look at that, a circle of protection red. So that's going to protect Ron from the fireball that one nicked the game in the previous game that we looked at. And the question now is who's going to win the match? Another damage here from the city. And he's playing a goblin war drums again, not attacking anymore with the imp because of that elf. And this is cool, <laughs> wow. Playing a feedback, an enchant enchantment. During the upkeep, uh, it can deal one damage to the enchantment's controller. And of course, Nick can use his amulet in response, but he's not doing that. And I mean, this is so cool. An enchant enchantment. Hardly sees any play actually in um, constructed. But I think the art alone makes it worth to play. And uh, I mean, Quentin Hoover is just a great artist and this is no exception. And look at that, a dragon engine here from Ron. It's a one, three creature and you can pay two to give it plus one, plus zero. And using the amulet to prevent damage here from the feedback and then playing out a uh, Order of the Ebon Hand, it's hard to see because there's so much glare on the card, but it is the Pump Knight, the Order of the Ebon Hand. And they're now asking, like, if you double block and I can deal a damage. And that actually works because I believe Ron can then deal a damage to a blocking creature before the damage is being dealt. So that means he can use the Archer in case of a double block to kill one of the two creatures before they can kill the dragon engine. And if you've read the Brothers War about the Antiquities expansion, dragon engine actually has a, a big part in that book. And look at that, there's a huge bump here by Ron and that means that Ron is now dealing not one damage but he's dealing four damage in total and Nick is already on nine life. And losing another life here, playing a spell blast, or sorry, a red elemental blast here on that feedback. And I think that's the right decision. And what can Nick do here? And there is the Spirit Shackle. And I always have found this an interesting card because it says put a minus zero, minus two counter on a creature every time it becomes tapped. So it doesn't get a counter now, but when Ron attacks and becomes tapped, then it gets a counter. You could also combine this, for instance, with an Icy Manipulator while you tap the creature and it gets a counter. And I really like that, that it's counters. So you can tap it multiple times, then it slowly dies. And look at that. There we have the Shimian Night Stalker again. And that's great defense. Does mean he's a little bit open now, but Ron is not attacking, not willing to sacrifice a creature here. And look at <laughs> this is cool, a breeding pit. Wow, an uncommon three and uh, the breeding pit has an upkeep of two black and you get a zero one thrall token. And this is actually really nice to combine with a Lord of the Pit. And uh, I mean, it would be cool if, uh, if Nick could even find a, uh, a Lord of the Pit in his deck. Playing the armor thrall now. So we've seen that in the previous game as well. He can sack that to give a plus one plus two counter on a creature deciding to keep it as a blocker and it looks like it's um oh this is interesting the flood it's one blue and you can pay two blue to tap target creature non-flying creature but of course um nick has a lot of chum blockers now with the thralls and there ron goes with his cat again oh actually deciding to play out his lanawar elf instead And there's an attack here by the Pump Knight because he can pump it. And it has protection from white, of course. I completely forgot about that. So that means that the damage dealt by the Archer is not going to work. And he can also prevent damage, of course, with the Amulet of Krug. Of course, only one damage, not more, because he needs to tap the Amulet when he uses it. But why not just block on the um, Wall of Brambles? He's choosing to double block it. 
And there's the trade. So he's pumping it to three and dealing all the damage to the dragon engine. Interesting choice here. And there's a Murfolk of the Pearl Trident. Tapping three more. Now playing that cat that we saw earlier. Forest Walk is not really going to help Ron in this case. And there's token number five. So there's a lot of 0-1 thralls here. On the side of Nick. And of course there's a really, 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 really slim chance that... Um, Nick might have pulled out a bad moon as a rare out of his 4th edition starter. Don't think so. And look at this! This Winter Blast could be the game changer. Tap X creatures and Winter Blast deals 2 damage to the creatures with flying. And I believe, how much is he? 7 here, so that means he can tap all the creatures. And Nick is sacking his armor thrall in response to save his imp, but is he going to save himself? How much damage can he actually deal? Nick is on one life! Oh wow, this is very spectacular. One measly life. Attacking here with the imp and it looks like, well, he, he's got a lot of chum blockers of course, so I don't think Ron can win with what he's got on the table now. And wow, look at that! Ron is playing an Elder Dragon Arcana Sabbath. Ridiculous! Re it, he actually pulled an Elder Dragon out of his Chronicle packs? That's what? Okay, 7-7 seven, seven Flyer. Um, I think this is this is game, unless... Um, I mean, Nick needs removal. Nick, you need removal. Fireball, Terror. But that's really a problem is sealed removal. And of course, I do believe I see a disintegrate, but he doesn't have enough mana. He's gonna tap something, a wall of heat. That's not gonna save him because a wall of heat doesn't fly. And I believe, I mean, he has to pay the upkeep cost here. And he does that, it seems. And of course he can redirect the damage to the Night Stalker. And I believe that's what they're looking up, how that works. These games are just insane. Look at this board state. I mean, this is ridiculous. And I played in this event as well and I just had so much fun. Because you just see these, these weird board states. And here we see the attack from the Elder Dragon and Nick redirecting all the damage to his Night Stalker, so the Night Stalker dies. I mean, if Nick still wins this one, it's like a small miracle. But never say never, and look at that, he's letting the Breeding Pit die, maybe because of that Disintegrate, I think I saw one in his hand. Oh, <laughs> he's playing a dragon. I forgot what it's called, it's from the Dark, I know that. I believe it's a 1-2 dragon, and you can pump it for one. But that's not going to save him though. Playing a Puppet Master to save his Elder Dragon. And he's attacking now with the 7-7. Seven, seven. There's a Chum Block. Doesn't have Trample. So it looks like Nick is now just buying time. And maybe waiting and hoping that he's going to pull a Fireball or something. And this is annoying because it cannot see what card this is. There's too much glare on the table, unfortunately. But to be honest, I'm surprised that uh, a power leak now. I'm surprised that Nick is still alive. So really respect here for Nick. Attacking again, chum blocking with the dragon, playing the power leak. That means that Nick has to pay an upkeep not to get any damage. And look at that, he's playing a fireball with the Dark Ritual to kill the Elder Dragon. Can he pull that off? He can't, I guess. I'm not sure why. If you know, please let me know in the, in the comments below. 
look at that he also has oh that's it that's game he also has an earthquake that's what i wanted to say but i guess it's game because nick couldn't kill that elder dragon and i actually want to know why so i'm just gonna look that up and i'll be with you back with you in a second okay so i looked at the card and at the bottom <laughs> for one white you can give it plus zero plus one you can now see it clearly on that screen <laughs> so that's why it stayed alive uh wow that's crazy um thank you ron and nick i mean these were really really entertaining games and this was just the first match of the reborn league let me know what you think of these games if you'd like me to post the other games i believe i have four of these in total um if you don't like him hey man let me know as well and um i'll see if i can post some other things but um i really enjoyed looking at these these cards um you don't see them that often and it's really interesting to see the synergies uh, let me know what you think of the game and if you if you want to know anything uh, any more about this league that's what i'm trying to say here you can go to ragingrulesseries.com if you'd like to see more old school magic you can of course check out my channel there are more than 100 videos with old school games for now thank you for watching and if you want to support the channel please like share the content that i make and if you're not a member yet please subscribe it helps out a lot Thank you for now and thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time.